let's dive into that exactly how thermally modified wood is made it's a three stage kiln process right you there it has no chemicals in it and it's it's just purely heat and steam right that's correct that's correct and the the essence of the thermal modification process is about degrading the hemicellulose to a very specific level and so you mentioned that three stage process and essentially there is a an initial stage that reduces the moisture content of the wood almost to zero and in so doing, we are eliminating a lot of the sugars, the minerals, the naturally occurring food sources for things like mold and rot and fungal decay. All of that gets sort of cooked out of the wood in that first phase. The second phase then spikes the temperature very high, typically around 200 degrees Celsius. These are nitrogen rich, oxygen starved environments um, to prevent the wood from, from combusting. And it's, it's during that phase that modification really happens. So it's that breaking of the hydroxyl groups and that then renders the wood what we call hydrophobic, which means it actually repels water more so than, than wood would naturally do. And so there you have dimensional stability and, um, and you sort of eliminate the wood's ability to absorb new moisture. And then that third and final phase is really about cooling the wood. We reintroduce some steam, which helps to condition and bring moisture content back up to around five or six percent and then that's how the wood goes um, into a uh, uh, finished profile finished molders and we turn it into siding decking dimensional lumber that's fascinating and and you all have control over the entire process so you all can achieve different colors and different uh, textures and all depending on how much you'll heat the wood up that's right yeah so the for lack of a better term, the sugars are almost caramelized during that high yeah. heat process. And what happens just kind of as a, as a, a really lovely um, sort of unintended uh, outcome of the process is you have these rich tones that the wood sort of that, that are imparted on the wood. And these colors are through colors. They're effectively baked all the way through the, the full thickness of the board. So when we're talking about siding, when we're talking about decking, when we're talking using arbor wood in some sort of a, uh, you know, a construction environment when you're cutting and ripping and chopping yeah. boards down, you're not having to try to color match those cut edges because that color goes all the way all through. The way and through. It, that's right. And it doesn't look superficial. Like it, like you can tell even the side profile, the color is consistent. It's not just like a, on, right on the surface that, like you said, if the top surface gets chipped, you're not going to see any other different color underneath. That's right. And there are no pigments, no dyes, no chemicals used to achieve that color. And so you don't have uh, maybe some, some of the plasticky looks that you would get in composite products. You just have beautiful natural wood. Do you all apply any sort of finish to get the darker colors? We do. So thermally modified wood um, proves to be a really good canvas, generally speaking, for paints and stains and finishes. Because again, it's dimensionally very stable a lot of paints, a lot of stains, they, 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 they bond well to the material and they're less prone to peeling or flaking off. We've also found for whatever reason that it's a good platform for charring and brushing and exploring some really interesting finishes. And so we at Arbor would have our take on traditional Japanese yakasugi or shusugi bond as some people are familiar with and, and uh, it can actually char the surface of the board. And because of the stability of the fundamental stability of the wood itself, that char really remains intact. It's less prone to flaking off and chipping off and uh, makes for a really, really beautiful board. So I looked into Yakusugi when I was making the video on like thermally modified wood. And I think traditionally they only charred the surface, but you all have a two stage process. You all actually, the wood is actually thermally modified. And then after that process, you all char the surface. That's right, that's right. So throughout history, that charring process has been about wood preservation. And in our case, we have this improved amount of wood preservation by virtue of thermal modification. So that, that charring, that Yakasugi process, I suppose adds some st additional stability and durability to the wood, but it's really about aesthetic. And, and yeah, at the end of the day, you have wood that has sort of two different approaches to natural protection. Um, and uh, and it's a, it's a, a 25, 30 plus year solution um, and in many cases can be can be very very low maintenance or even maintenance free 